the end of the day, if I have invested, I have to return my capital first. To, to have to uh, return my capital, I didn't see any profit that uh, will indicate to me that your capital will be back by this year. Every year instead it was, uh, you know, losing and losing and losing and therefore if you are losing, you might better stop, yeah? my stop. This is the story of Brano Gabriela Award, the owner and the manager of Gumbo Vegetable Farm in Juba City. Brano started the farm in 2008 with great hopes of growing different types of vegetables in 60 acres of land. Uh, we started it in 2008. We started clearing the land first. It's about 65 hectares. Then we started first with vegetables. All sorts of vegetables has been tried and uh, many other products. Hey. How are you? Fine. Good. Okay. See you. Yeah. Even my dogs are abandoned. You forgot me. Yeah. My dogs. Yeah. 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 These are the machines Brahono imported to help maximize the $80,000 investment. After four years of hard work, the machines are now abandoned and rusting in the farm. We started bringing unnecessary machines. This is, for example, planter. Uh, tractors, of course, and harrow. Uh, a lot of money has been put up into this farm. What really frustrated Brahano from the farm project is that everything was against him. The pest and the labor was too expensive for him. The pests are great here. Yeah highly infested and therefore pesticide to apply was very expensive and plus you don't get it in this country you have to go to Kenya to bring it and how expensive eventually it was been for me everything was against this the flood the, the Ugandan product was much cheaper than my and my cost of production was very high comparing and therefore, when I go to the market, it becomes less than what I have uh, produced it by. And uh, labor is also one of the factors that uh, is expensive here. Either you have to import people who live here, and then you pay them well, and uh, food, and accommodation. All this makes it more expensive. Milton Wachir, the former farm manager, says him and over 20 workers and casual laborers lost their jobs, leaving them in a desperate situation. And now the project stopped. Since it stopped, I'm not getting the salary which I was being given by that time. So that is the effect I have. Before we are having like 20 people, permanent, plus other casuals from the villages. Mm -hmm. yeah. After stopping, some they don't have work, some are just idling there. Borohano said another factor that really discouraged him is the issue of land ownership. He was not owning the land, spending thousands of dollars on lease. He added that he had no technical support from the Ministry of Agriculture, such as experts, to help him fight pests. Land has to be owned by the person who is cultivating. Because having not land issue has to be solved at the end of the day. Yes, it is community. Yes, community can own it. But how would they work with a partnership of a partner? They want to develop it for other things, they will be stopping it. And therefore, having put all that money, the return is in long term in agriculture, not, not, not less than 10 years. You're lost. Even for the subsistence, I think some support has to be given. Some extension from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture has to arise. Some educated people, agriculturalists, who would really train the local population to how to grow anything, Whatever difficulties they may face, also them to help them to solve it. 
and that way people will be encouraged. They are the ones. Malakan Sara. <laughs> Milton and Brahana plead to the government to support domestic and commercial farming in the country by giving the farmers loans or spending more government revenue in the agricultural sector. What I tell to the government, they should do, promote farmers because most of the farmers they need loan even if the government is not providing. They need machine, no machine for agriculture sectors to help the farmers, so the farmers will not grow. Mm. Therefore, I, I believe agriculture has to be number one. Anything money earned in South Sudan, if it is put into agriculture, definitely it will be at the basket of the regime. As conflict continues in the country and farming has been disrupted, where will the people of South Sudan get food in the next coming months? there will be a great risk of losing life due to starvation in the country. For the Niles, I am Simon Bingo.